Hi, how are you today? I hope you're not affected by the typhoon threatening to hit our country. You are now on module 6, moving averages. Were you able to do your own research? Okay, let's compare notes. Welcome to the Responsible Traders POB. These are my notes, my own additional research and studies on the topic that I posted, and my personal observations and opinions that I am sharing with you to further enhance our knowledge and understanding. Some of these were previously posted on the Responsible Trader thread, Stock Market Filipinas. This is the latest version of previous post I made. Some of these, plus further explanations and discussions, will be appearing in my forthcoming book, The Responsible Trader. Before we go to our lesson proper, let us do some quick review. Volume increases in the direction of the trend. Based on this, each of the two below is a fake out. AR on the left or RWM on the right. The one on the left, AR, is a real breakout because it is supported by heavy volume. The one on the right, RWM, is a fake out because the breakout occurred with low volume. What are the main indicators used to measure volume? The main indicators used to measure volume are on balance volume, or OBV, and check in. A gap is a break between prices on a chart that occurs when the price of a stock makes a sharp move up or down with no trading occurring in between. What are the three types of gaps? The three types of gaps are a breakaway gap, a runaway gap, and the exhaustion gap. Moving averages rank next to volume for being dependable chart tools. However, I seldom see this when I see charts posted by members of Facebook groups. We'll talk about this in complete detail, but first let us go back to basics. Do you still remember your college days? How your professor got your average for your final grade? It works the same way. Let us use the following stock prices, closing date of nickel, to illustrate this. To get the 5 days average from November 26 to December 2nd, we just add all the prices from the stated period and divide by 5 to get the average. However, this is not yet considered moving. To get the moving average, we get the next 5 days data. This time, we drop the oldest date from the series, November 26, and add the latest date, December 3rd, and divide by the same number of days to get the average moving. If you repeat the same process for five days over and over again, you're going to get the moving average for five days. And if you do this for the period 
that you want to have plotted on your chart, you're going to arrive at a series of plot points. By connecting these plot points, you're going to get the simple moving average or SMA lines on your chart. Using the same formula, you can get whatever simple moving average or SMA you want in the chart. No need to worry about manual computations anymore. It is enough for us to understand how the figures are arrived at. All of these are now available in most charting softwares, and you can lay them out in your chart at the click of a mouse. The SMA formula can be applied to a weekly or a monthly set of data, so it is just referred to as the periods SMA. Simple moving averages are simply referred to as SMA, and a 20 period simple moving average is usually called a 20 SMA. A longer period SMA is more smooth than a shorter period SMA. This is a chart of nickel showing a more smooth 50 SMA with a gold line than the 20 SMA, the blue line. Moving forward, I will just be using the term 20 SMA or 50 SMA when I refer to simple moving averages. The moving average is one of the most versatile and widely used of all technical indicators. Because of the way it is constructed and the fact that it can be so easily quantified and tested, it is the basis for many mechanical trend following systems in use today. As I previously stated, moving averages rank next to volume for being dependable chart tools. They form dynamic support and resistance zones. Support when under price patterns and resistance when above them. Using one moving average is one of the most fundamental and common basic approaches in trading. It can be as simple as assuming a trading signal when the price crosses the moving average line. This is called the crossover rule. If the price crosses above the moving average, then you buy. When it goes below, then you sell. If you use a short-term average, for example a 10-day SMA, then you will have several crossings which could signal more trades. And if you act on them, you may find many false signals, otherwise known as whip sauce. However, the short-term average will give earlier signals, allowing you to capture more of the genuine price moves. If you use a longer-term average, for example, a 50-day SMA, then you will miss out on the first part of any move. This will give you far fewer signals to trade, and the signals you get will be more reli reliable, but with less false trades. A middle ground between the two is the 20-day simple moving average. The 20-day SMA is often referred to as the swing traders line. It also acts as a curving trend line. This is nickel with a 20-day simple moving average. As you can see, while the stock was making higher highs and higher lows. The 20-day SMA 
acted as support. When the stock failed to make more higher highs and higher lows, the price crossed over down the 20-day SMA. If using one SMA is good, using two might be better. This is another commonly used system and is called the double crossover method. It's similar to the single moving average system, but instead of the moving average crossing the price, the signal is generated when the moving average crosses another moving average. When moving average lines crosses over one another, they can indicate a change in trend and also provide buy or sell signals. When a faster moving average cross over a, slow, a slower moving average, it is called a golden cross and it could provide a buy signal. When it crosses over down, it is called a dead cross and it could provide a sell signal. Many times moving averages move in step with the stock's trend line. It therefore confirms the trend, which is a very valuable information for trading. According to almost all of the books I've read, major moving averages used by most traders are the 10, 20, 50, 100, and 200 period lines. In the case of CDSEC Online, they use moving averages based on a 260-day year, 52 weeks times 5 trading days per week, on the charting software included in the trading platform. Calls default setting, therefore, is based on the following. 130 days for half year, 65 days for a quarter, and then 32 days, 16 days, etc. For me, I use the 20, 50, 100, 200 period setting on Miami Broker and just use calls default setting when using call chart. It is worthwhile playing with the time periods used and backtesting to try and optimize the signals. It's generally recognized that the double crossover method lags the market a little bit more than using a single average, but usually produces fewer whipsaws. When you are using a single moving average, it can be useful to draw a percentage envelope on each side of the moving average. This gives you a pictorial representation of where the price may be overextended. A moving average envelope is simply the drawing of a line each side of the moving average at a distance that is a fixed percentage away. Shown here is Nichols chart with a 20-day SMA and a 3% envelope. When you look at this, you can see where the price is touching or passing through the envelope. This mark points of extremes. However, there is a more effective and informative way of drawing limits unexpected price moves than just using a fixed percentage and that is by using a technique developed by John Bollinger, the Bollinger Bands. Here's the same chart of nickel again but with Bollinger Bands instead of the fixed envelopes. Bollinger Bands are one of the more widely known technical indicators around but the least understood.
They are also very dynamic and have many uses. Invented by John Bollinger, they are best described as a way to visually measure volatility. Bollinger bands are constituted by a middle band with two outer bands. The middle band is a simple moving average normally set at 20 periods. The outer bands are normally set to standard deviations above and below the middle band. Bandwidth simply measures the differences between the upper band and the lower band. Bollinger bands track price volatility and can be applied to any financial asset. They tend to move in wide bands during trending phases of the market. Particularly in fast moving downward markets. As trends weaken, volatility decreases. and Bollinger Bands narrow. The tightening of Bollinger Bands can be the precursor of a big move. Bollinger Bands are in effect similar to the moving average envelope, but the distance to your place from the moving average line varies. The distance depends on the way the price is performing and is based on a statistical number called the standard deviation. This calculates how volatile the price is and thus gives a more relevant figure. Usually, the bonds are placed to standard deviations each side of the moving average and statistics tell us that about 95% of price movement should be contained in this band. In summary, the moving average is one of the most versatile and widely used of all technical indicators. A longer SMA is more smooth than a shorter SMA. A simple application of using the simple moving average is the single moving average. Buy signals are generated when price cross over the SMA and sell signals are generated when price cross under the SMA. One of the advantages of using moving averages in a trading system is that they naturally follow the trend and it is also one of the less risky ways of trading. Two SMAs may also be used to generate buy and sell signals. When two SMAs are used, a buy signal is generated when a faster SMA crosses over a slower SMA. This is called a golden cross. When a faster SMA crosses under a slower SMA, a sell signal is generated and this is called a dead cross. When using a single moving average, it can be useful to draw a percentage envelope or channel on each side of the moving average. This gives you a pictorial representation of whether the price may be overextended. Instead of moving average envelopes, Bollinger Bands are used for a more effective and informative way of drawing limits on expected price moves than just using a fixed percentage. Some stocks work better under different settings. Don't be afraid to experiment with different settings and observe the price action of the stock you're monitoring fits better with your chosen setting. Always remember the responsible trader's keys. Keep it simple and sustainable. Too many moving averages on a new chart will look like a web of tangled spaghetti. My suggestion is to start first with two, say 20 and 50 SMA, then start adding as you get familiar with the others. Okay, I think this would be all for now. Until then, keep safe and I wish you the best in your learning journey 
and good luck on all your trades.